So we've been talking about the word of God and what I've been trying to get you to an understanding is um, how important the Bible is in your life and how important the word of God is. And I think that a lot of Christians will struggle with this their entire Christian life. They never kind of arrive to that point where they see how valuable the Bible is to them and how, how the word of God is. It, it'll sustain you, strengthen you, secure you, build you up. And I think that's a shame because a lot of people never really get to that point in their life where they never really experience God through his word. And so every one of you are going to have a different encounter with the Bible, with Jesus Christ, with God. And God wants to bring you re literally right into his presence where the word of God is speaking to your heart, speaking to your mind, speaking to your soul. And where the word of God begins to renew, restore and to revive you. And this is what we want. We want you to come to that point. And so a lot of times people open up the Bible. They really don't read it. They don't get much out of it. They don't really see God speaking to them through the word of God and so they never necessarily experience God in his word God wants you to experience his power his presence his person God wants you to experience who he is but that can only be founded in the very word of God now I can try to help you I can bring you to a point where I can help you to try to understand these concepts of these principles but only God has to reveal this to you this has to come under the anointing of the very spirit of God when you are in the presence of God and the word of God is speaking to you as though God himself is communicating to you through the Bible. But I can tell you that this can happen in your life, but this is something that you have to experience on your own behalf. This is something that you have to come to terms with when you read the word of God and you saturate your mind and heart with the Bible. Then God begins to make himself known to you and you begin to experience God in his very word. And so you, you're going to have to understand these things how significant this is in your life because so many people will read the Bible but they don't absorb the Bible the Bible doesn't become a part of their life and they read the Bible but God doesn't necessarily speak to them and communicate with them and they never experience the very presence of Almighty God in the Word of God and so we see a lot of times Christians are struggling with the same battles the same conflicts the same issues year after year after year why is because they haven't experienced God God in the word of God and we want to bring you to the point where you understand the significance and the relevance of the Bible in your life and we know and I hopefully you know this but there isn't anything more important in your life than the Bible do you know that nothing has preeminence over the word of God nothing is more and should be more important in your life than the Bible the very word of God but yet so many times we'll put things in front of the Bible you know the Bible will be at the you know maybe at the end of our day or maybe we we spend a few more a few moments in the word of God and listen guys you've got to in, engulf yourself in the word of God it's not something that you're just going to pick up and then just begin to read that book is supernatural and it's spiritual you've got to spend time in it meditating on it pondering it absorbing the word of God you have to literally commit yourself to the reading and the studying of the scriptures in order for you to see and understand what God wants to convey to you and how God wants to reveal himself to you God reveals himself to you and I in the very pages of scripture. God makes himself known to you through his spoken word to you. It's the word of God that speaks to you. And when you pray, you're speaking to God. And when you open the Bible, God is speaking to you. And in that conversation that you're having with God, you have to begin to absorb the thought process of what God is showing to you. You have to begin to think about what God is trying to convey to you. You have to absorb the scriptures and study to show yourself approved unto God as a workman that needeth not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth it takes time to study the word of God guys we are studying a supernatural book a spiritual book we are studying and we're investing in something that is supernatural and you have to literally engulf yourself into the word of God you have to see how it all fits together how it all comes together and then when you begin to put it together God will begin to speak to you through the very word of God now once again if you if you it, this thing works like this. The first commandment is to love God with what? 
All your heart, mind, and soul, right? We got to love God. Now, if you put anything in front of God, you will not, God will not have that communion with you. You can't put something in front of the Word of God. The Word of God, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and what? All of these things shall be added unto you. David says, oh, how I love thy law. It is my what? Meditation all the day. David had a relationship with the Word of God. David had a relationship with the, with the law and the commandments of God. David didn't even have half, half of what we have. And David had a relationship with the principles and the oracles and the commandments of God. And through that, it gave him a knowledge of who God was. And through that, him studying the Old Testament, him studying the principles of God, the laws of God, and the commandments of God. You know what that did? It helped him to understand the nature of God. It helped him to understand the holiness of God. It helped him to understand the righteousness of God. It helped him to understand the justness of God. It helped him to to understand the love and the mercy and the forgiveness of God and through studying the word of God it brought him in communion with God you cannot have communion with God without the word of God it, it is impossible I don't care how much you pray I don't care how many times you go to church without you studying and reading and absorbing the word of God you cannot have true communion with God you can't do it it's the word of God that brings us in contact with who Jesus Christ is. It's the word of God that opens up the door so we can see and understand the very person of who God is. It's the word of God that helps us to understand the nature and the attributes of who God is. It's the word of God when God begins to speak to you and commune with you. It's the word of God that unlocks the very person of God in communion with God. So we had kicked off, and let's open up your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And I gave you certain scriptures that you should retain and try to really commit to memorization, and especially when it comes to knowing and understanding the very word of God. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13. Now notice what it says here, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So once again, Paul addresses this issue of deception. We're not going to get, we don't have time to get into that, but you have to be aware that you're not being deceived, okay? But it says evil men and seducers, they're going to get worse and worse. They're going to wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But Paul writes to young Timothy and he says, but, but, but continue thou in the things which thou has learned and has been assured of knowing of whom thou has learned them. He says, Timothy, you continue in the things that I've taught you. You continue in the word of God. You continue in the studying, in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the reading of the word of God. Now watch what he says here, right? He goes on and he says, and he says in verse 15, that from a child thou hast, thou hast known the holy scriptures. So his grandmother and his mother read the word of God to him. And it had a huge impact in his life as he grew up. Why? It's because the word of God will not return what? it won't return void. And what his mother did and what his grandmother did, it had a huge impact in his life. And then when Paul came on the scene and the truth was being preached to young Timothy, Timothy responded to it. Why? It's because he already had faith as a young child and then he responded because of the word of God. We live in a culture today where people don't even know what the Bible is any longer. Literally, they have no understanding of the word of God. Their parents never read the Bible to them. And if they did take them to a church, it was nothing more than some sort of organized religion and some sort of organized tradition where there was no exposition of the scriptures, where there was no true knowledge of the living God. And so therefore, people are even further from the truth. They're even further from the truth. Now we look on and he says that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. You see that? They make you wise. They give you the revelation and the knowledge of what salvation is. And then he goes on through faith which is in which is in Christ Jesus. Now look at verse 16. We, this is what we talked about. All scripture is given by what people? It's all given by inspiration of God, okay? And that doesn't mean the NIV, the RSV, the ASV, all those corrupt translation. The only word of God that is inspired is the authorized version, and that's the King James Bible, okay? There is no other, there is no other inspired word of God that is clear through the manuscripts, and it's clear through the entire canon of Scripture within itself. Now, look at this. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Now, first of all, it means 
means it's God breathed. The word of God is supernatural and it's all powerful. The word of God is what? It's quick and say it out loud. It's what? It's powerful and it's sharper than any two edged sword. The word quick, it means it's alive. The word of God has been moving through history. Now, if this book is still alive in you, that means it's creating something in you. The word of God, it's a living word. This book is the word of God and it's the word of the living God. And that Bible says that it works what? Effectually in you that what? In you that believe. So that book is doing something in you every time you open it up. It's transforming you. It's changing you. It's cultivating something inside of you. Okay, now watch this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Now notice what it says, and it's profitable, okay, for doctrine. All right, there's your first primary illustration of scripture. It's profitable for doctrine. That means teaching, for reproof, for correction, instruction, and righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly really furnished unto all good what? Works. So the word of God was given to us that the man of God may be what? Perfect. You know what God does through the word of God? He perfects you. Now, the word perfect here, it means matured and developed. Because let's face it, none of us are ever going to be perfect until what? This corruptible puts on incorruption and this mortal puts on immortality. That's when we'll be perfect. That's when we'll be without flaw and without error and without sin. That's when we will be like God. But until then, what does the word of God do? It's maturing you and it's perfecting you and it's transforming you okay those of you who don't read the Bible on a continual basis you are not being perfected you are not being matured you are not growing and you're not developing this is why we come to church this is hey guys this is why we have a 10 o'clock Sunday school for you guys not so you can leave but to help you to mature in the things of God then we continue with the 11 o'clock service to continue to grow in the things of God guys this is the building blocks you should take Sunday and say Sunday is the Lord's day and I'm not doing anything else but being where God wants me to be because the word of God is more important than anything else in my life I got my rally over here but <laughs> but that is a fact guys I know some of us well I got to go have lunch with grandma bring grandma to church I got to have grandpa I got to do this and I got to do that listen nothing is more important because it's the word of God that brings conviction it's the word of God that brings transformation it's the word of God that brings illumination it's the word of God that brings salvation that's the only way people are going to get saved and if you don't embody the word of God, you will never be able to put the word of God out. I try to get people to understand this. Christians, they, they, they have no power in their life is because the power is in the written word of God. If you don't get that thing in you, you can't put it out in you. It's got to be a part of your being. The word of God has to sustain you, strengthen you, build you up. This is why we do all the things that we do. Guys, we don't, we, don't, we don't have discipleship one, discipleship two for our own benefit. We do it for you people so you can grow. So you can be an effective tool for the Lord Jesus Christ because the word of God is what brings transformation and salvation. Okay? It's the word of God that does all things. Now, I want you to turn to the book of Acts for a second. And I just want to kind of show you a couple of concepts here, but turn to the book of Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17 and verse 10, Acts chapter 17 and verse 10. And the brethren immediately sent away, uh, sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea. So Paul and Silas, they go to Berea. Now watch what happens here. Who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Now watch what happened. And they received the word, watch this, with all, with all what? Readiness of mind. And what did they do? Say it out loud. They what? They searched the scriptures daily. Now, they were noble. They said, you know something? I want to know if this thing is true. I want to know if what Paul was saying was true. I want to know what if, the, what if Jesus was real. I want to know that if what Paul was saying confirms with the other scriptures, the other Old Testament portions of scripture, I want to know if these things are true. So you know what they did? They searched the scriptures when? Daily. 
daily. You know what they did? Man, they went through that book over and over and over. They went over there to Genesis 22. Oh, there's Jesus. They went over there to Psalm 22. There's Jesus again. They went over there all the way back to Genesis chapter 4. There's Jesus again. They went through the pages of the word of God. They looked at the Passover lamb and said, there is Jesus once again. And they confirmed that the things that Paul said were confirming with the scriptures. But they searched the scriptures when? Daily. It wasn't something that they did half-heartedly. It wasn't something that they just chose, well, I'll go to church on Sunday and see if those things that Pastor Mike said were true. No. You know what you need to do? Whatever I say, you go back and you search it out every single day. The Bible says they went from house to house when? Daily. Daily. It wasn't something on a Sunday morning. It wasn't something, you know, once a week where they met for church and then everyone left and they didn't, didn't study, didn't show themselves approved unto God. They didn't, they, listen, they absorbed themselves in the word of God. It became a part of their being. They searched the scriptures daily, it says. Daily. Now, Paul makes another mention over here a, a little bit later on about the people at Thessalonica. So turn to Second Thess First Thessalonians chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we'll look right at verse 13 now, right? For this cause also, watch this, we thank uh, we, uh, we, God without ceasing. We thank God without ceasing. Because when you receive the word of God, what you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men. Did you see that? But as it is in truth, say it out loud, the what? See that? They didn't receive it. They just said, hey, this isn't man. They didn't receive it as human being, as a human instrument. They didn't receive it as though it was just something that was given to them by man. They looked at it and they said, this is the very word of God. They received it as the word of God. Now watch what happens here, right? The word of God, which effectually, what does it say? Worketh also in you that what? Believe. In that believe. You see that? So what did the word of God do? It changed them. All right? Once the word of God was preached, that's, you know, Second Corinthians 5.21, it says, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? He's a new creature. So what does the word of God do? It changes you. It changes the way you think. It changes the way you feel. It changes the way you live. It changes the way you see things. It changes how you, th it changes your process of thought. The word of God, it literally transforms you, those who believe. When you believe that book and you spend time in that book, you know what God is doing? He's renewing you, he's restoring you, and he's reviving you. That's what the word of God does. And you're going to look back in a few minutes. We're going to go back to the Old Testament and we're going to see how the word of God, literally what the word of God did in the life of a young boy by the name of David. The word of God transcended everything in his life. You know, I can tell you that this book is going to change you and do all these miraculous things in your life, but you have to experience it on your own. I can sit here until I'm blue in the face. I can pound the pulpit. I can scream at you. I can show you scripture after scripture after scripture. But until you experience it, you will never know. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And the thing that bothers me is that so many people have never experienced God in the very word of God. You've got people that have never, you've got people out there, let's face it, they don't even read their Bible. You've got very few Christians have read from Genesis to Revelation. Honestly speaking, how many guys have done that? Put your hand up. Well, shame on the rest of you who haven't. You say, oh, Pastor Mike, don't make me feel bad. Guys, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm trying to bring you to a point where God can show you his glory. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I want you to understand who God is. And I want you to understand the revelation of Jesus Christ, which is only found written in the pages of the scriptures. Because the deeper the revelation, the deeper the comprehension, the more understanding you have of God himself. The more you understand his holiness, the more you understand his righteousness, the more you understand his love and his compassion and his mercy and his grace and his forgiveness. And the more you understand what's happening in this crazy world, the more you can see and rationalize with your own feelings and your own emotions. Listen, it's the word of God that sustains every aspect of humanity. 
Without that book, we're nothing. Amen. A Christian who doesn't read and study the word of God has no concept of what God is doing. No revelation. No vision. No perception. You won't know how to witness. You won't know how to communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is, I believe this is one of the major dilemmas that we have with Christians. They don't know how to witness. They don't know how to impact other people's lives. Why? It's because they don't understand the true love of God that is to be shed abroad in their own hearts. I believe that when a Christian has a lack of knowledge of the word of God, it makes you inefficient and ineffective for the kingdom of God. When you see the early apostles men that engulfed their lives in the word of God and committed themselves to the things of God. Their emotions were no longer a factor. They were committed to stay the course and to do what God has called them to do. And through the teaching and the preaching and the exposition of the word of God, it strengthened them. It sustained them. It gave them, a bit, it gave them power over their emotions. It gave them power over their insecurities and over their doubts and over their fears. It gave them all the tools that they needed. That's what the word of God does. So many people will never understand this. If you were to turn to Psalm 119 now. Psalm 119. I just want to, I, I want us to, I want to just kind of elaborate on this a little bit. In Psalm 119, everyone knows it's the longest what? It's the longest chapter in the Bible. It's in the center of your Bible. It's the longest chapter in the Bible. David writes Psalm 119, and all he's talking about is what he experienced with the Word of God. This is what he's talking about. David is talking about his own experience with the Word of God. He's talking about what God showed him, what God revealed to him, what God did inside of him. David, when he writes the Psalms, all he's writing about is what was happening in his own heart. Now, here's the, here's the thing on this. David was so close with God. He was so connected with God through the pages of the Old Testament, through the Old Testament laws and the commandments and the principles of God that he could write what was inside of him because it was what he experienced. He experienced the power of God in his life. Guys, you and I are no different from David. The question is, what have you ever experienced in the word of God? Have you ever experienced God's power, his blessings, his anointing? Have you ever opened up that book, right? And the spirit of God is literally just speaking to you and revealing the glory of God to you. And you just fall down and you just weep sometimes. Sometimes you just lift your hands and you're like, praise God. And God is speaking to you through the pages of scripture. And you get to that point, honestly speaking, you don't even want to put that book down. You don't want to put it down. You're like, man, I got to get back to it. I got to see what God says. I want to see what he's going to show me today. I want to see what he's going to reveal to me this morning. I want to see what God has for me to see. Amen. That's when you know you're going in the right direction. Some Christians pick up the book and like, I don't understand it. I can't read it. Or they go like this. They fall asleep. There's no enthusiasm. Well, I guess I would be the same way if I didn't see anything in the pages of the scripture and there was no communion with God. There was no reviving of my spirit. There was no restoring me. I mean, David says, he what? Restoreth my what? He restores my soul. You know what that means, guys? I mean, think about it. You think about all the adversity and the struggle that David went through. You think about all the conflict that David went through. You think about all the pain and the, and the hurt and all the despair that poor David went through. And he says, God, the word of God, he restored my soul. My soul fainted. The Bible says that God drug him out of a miry pit. That was a pit of despair. It was a pit of depression. It was a pit where David was crashing. And then what did God do through the word of God and through the spirit of God? God restored him, Amen. built him up and strengthened him. Amen. He renewed his mind, renewed his spirit. He was restored. Yes, Back to thinking clearly, not being controlled by his fears and his emotions. God restored him. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the chef, I will, shadow of death, I will what? I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art what? Thou art with me. 
Well, how did David know the presence of God with him? Well, he knew because of the word of God. It was the word of God that was sustaining him. It was the word of God that was strengthening him. It was the word of God that brought stability, mental stability, spiritual stability. It was the word of God that brought him security. Guys, if you're not in the word of God, you will not have mental, emotional, and spiritual stability in your life. You will live in fear. Your emotions will be up and down like a roller coaster. You'll be all over the board because a double-minded man is what? Unstable, Unstable what? in all his ways. You won't know how to interact with people. You won't know how to break down the walls. You won't learn anything that God wants you to do. It's the word of God that brings us to this point. David's whole relationship in writing those psalms, it was based on his experiences with God. That was it. He was just telling you, man, look what God did here. Look what God did here. Let me give you an example of this, right? Just go to Psalm, uh, Psalm 19, really quick. Psalm 19, chapter 19. Psalm, nope, Psalm 19, verse 7. Psalm 19, verse 7. Now, this, this um, we used to sing this psalm. If Trisha was here, maybe we could have her do it one day. But this, used to, this was an absolute beautiful psalm. It was, it was done in a, in a song when David wrote this. David, obviously, we know he played the harp and he was a beautiful musician. And what he would do is he would sing out to God. He would sing out to God. He'd say, here's a young boy, shepherd boy, out there with the sheep. Just him, the sheep, and nobody else. You know, that's where David learned to have fellowship with God. That's it, guys. When it's just you and God. It's just when you get alone and there isn't anyone around, the TV isn't on, distracting you. The phone, you're not picking up the phone every five minutes, distracting you. It's just you and God. Nobody else is there. Nobody else. Charlie, sit still back there. Nobody else. It's just you and God. This is where David learned to have communion with God as a young boy. Just think about that. A young boy. Commun there was nobody else like him. God looked at David and said, David was a man after what? He was a man after his own heart. God said that. God says, that little boy, that young boy, he wants my heart. He wants to be like me. He wants to love like me. He wants to understand like me. He wants to be like me. He's studying my laws. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reveal myself to him. And he is going to experience me through the pages of scripture. Amen. And that's where David experienced God. That's what made him the man that he was. Every time David was faced with adversity... The Lord restored his soul. Did he go through dark times? Oh boy, he went through dark times. He went through real dark times. A lot darker than all of us, trust me. Have you ever tried, had somebody try to kill you? Have you ever been chased down? Hunted? Watch this now. Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is what? Perfect. Perfect. Now, look at guys, look at this, right? What does it do? Converts what? All right, let, now, I don't have time to develop this whole thing, but your soul is who you really are. OK, remember what Jesus says? Come unto me, all you that what labor and are heavy laden. He says, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Right. For I am what meek and lowly and you shall find what you shall find rest to your soul. OK. The soul of man is in turmoil. The soul of man is being discouraged in despair, fearful, confused. The soul of man is at disarray. Man has turmoil in his own soul, and that is the seat of all of our problems. And only thing that can reach the soul is the word of God. You say, what about a counselor? Listen, half of them counselors are a bunch of kooks. Come on. That's right. What about this? What about that? What about this? No, no, no. The only thing that can reach your soul is the word of God. Amen. Why do you think Jesus says, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly, and you shall find what? Rest to your soul. Aren't you glad, man, when you're reading that book, God just puts your soul at rest? Right, Brother Wilkes? 
Wilkes is over there. He's faced with cancer. He's faced with adversity. God only knows what God's going to do to him. You know what he does? He just trusts God. Amen. He doesn't lose. He doesn't lose a week of sleep. Right, Wilkes? Amen. I talked to George before his surgery. He just says, nope, I'm good. Amen. Some of you guys were panicking more than him. <laughs> oh, brother George. Oh, brother George. George is like, I'm good, Pastor Mike. Yeah. Some of the brothers, they love him so much. They were more scared. They were scared. They were more scared for him. Yeah. But I'm telling you right now, because only God can give your soul rest. Rest to the soul is what people are looking for. That's why people do drugs. That's why they drink. That's why they travel. That's why they do. That's why. Listen, guys, people soul is literally has no harmony, no rest and no peace without Jesus Christ and without the living word of God. Their soul is in disarray. So look at this. The law of the Lord is perfect. What does it do? It converts the soul. It changes you. Well, what's the law of God? It's the word. It's guys. It's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Guys, that's it. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's all David had. In the word and from him reading the laws of God, it converted his soul. It put his soul at rest. It put his soul at ease. It renewed his soul. It restored his soul. It strengthened him as a young boy. When all of Israel was afraid and afraid to face the giant, David's like, I'll fight him. He had no fear. He had no fear. You want to know what a big problem is in this world? Anxiety and fear and stress and worry. And you know what David did? David, all of them, oh, listen, all the Israelites were hiding like little scared kids. And here comes this young boy. I'll fight him. The Lord is my strength. God's got my back. I spent time studying the laws of God. I spent time in his word. And through that, God gave me strength. He gave me security and he gave me stability. You never have strength, you'll never have security, and you will never have stability without that book. Amen. This world is an absolute mess, and they have people have no stability. You've got young people that are living in fear with anxiety and depression and worry, and they're confused. Why? It's because they don't have the book. I know people get mad at me for saying that stuff, but it's a fact. Look what he says here, right? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimonies of the Lord, look at this, is sure, making what? Why is the simple? There's, there's, there's his wisdom. We see over and over that David behaved himself what? Wisely. Over and over. Look at this. The statues, meaning the word of God, the principles, the commandments of God, the statues of the Lord are right. Now, notice what David says. What does it do? Rejo you want some rejoicing? You did. Well, Pastor Mike, I just had a good vacation. You come back from that vacation, you'll still be as miserable as when you left. Some of you will be worse off after you get back. Guys, the only thing that's going to bring rejoicing to your heart is the word of God. It's not going to be a new car. It's not going to be a new boyfriend or a new girlfriend. By all means, it's not going to be that. And listen, guys, the only thing that is going to bring rejoicing to the heart is the commandment of God. And that's what's going to do it. Now, I could, listen, guys, I could, you could say, Pastor Mike, I don't believe that. I disagree with that. Until you experience it, you will disagree with it. But until you engulf yourself in that book, right? And then one day God begins to speak to your heart. And you begin to see the spirit of God move through the word of God. And then all of a sudden, you're going to have a rejoicing of the heart that will overwhelm you. All your problems and all your fears and all your distress. God will take all that away. The statues of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. Look at this. The commandment of the Lord is pure. What does it do here, guys? Man, it helps you to see things correctly. It helps you to look at this world and it helps you to process information. It helps you to see what's going on. That's what that book does. That book helps you to see. It helps you to see clearly. 
Thy word is a what? It's a lamp, right? It's a lamp and it's a what? And it's a light. Hey guys, every time you don't read that Bible, every time you ignore that word of God, every time you don't apply the scriptures to your life, you, my friend, are walking in darkness. You're walking in darkness. You're walking in darkness. Watch this. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Notice that. The fear of the Lord, right? Notice that. The fear of God. That's what no people don't have any day. They don't have any fear of God. There's no fear of God before their eyes. Romans chapter three, Isaiah talks about it as well. They lost the fear of God. The fear of God is the beginning of what? Wisdom, Wisdom. and to depart from evil is what? Understanding. The fear of the Lord. Well, I didn't think we're supposed to fear God. Well, you better fear God. The fear of the Lord is clean. It's enduring forever. Now look at this. What brought David to that point of the fear of God in his life? Listen, David feared God. Therefore, he feared nothing else. Do you understand that? David had a fear of God. Therefore, he didn't fear anything else. If you have a true, healthy fear of God, you don't fear anything else. Jesus says, don't fear them that can destroy your body. Jesus said that. But fear him, God, who can destroy both body and soul. Where people? In hell. Jesus said that. Don't get mad at me. Jesus said it. Don't fear them. Don't fear those people. But you fear him who can destroy your body and soul in hell. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they. Look at this, right? More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, than what? Much fine gold. He's talking about the word of God. The laws, the commandments of God. They're, mo they're more to be desired than gold. He says, sweeter also than a honeycomb. Look at this, that honey and a honeycomb more over by them. Watch this is thy servant warned and in, in keeping them. There is what? There's great. So he says that through the word of God, David was warned. But then in keeping them, there was what? There was great reward. So when we live and follow the very word of God. There's a God is a rewarder of them that what diligently seek him. You know what God does? He rewards us. Well, what is the reward? You know what the reward is? Soundness of mind. Amen. You know what the reward is? Having a life where a life of peace and harmony. Amen. Where you're not living in fear and distress and turmoil and anxiety. That's what he's talking about. Now turn to Psalm 119. <clears throat> okay. So now remember the latter part of Psalm 19 that we just looked at, verse 11, all right? Um, verses uh, 9, all right? And the word of God, the desire that David had for it. So look at Psalm 119 and verse uh, 14. Psalm 119, verse 14 and 16, right? Now watch what David says. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies. You see that? As much as in all riches. Then David says here, I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. So notice this. So here he talks about the testimonies, which is the laws and the commandments of God. Once again, it's the written word of God, the testimonies. Then he says, I'm going to meditate in your precepts. OK, once again, the laws, the concepts and the oracles of the scripture. Right. And I will have respect unto thy ways. Then he says, I will delight myself in thy statues and I will what? David's like, I'm not going to forget it. I'm not going to forget the word of God. He said, well, how come? It was because what he experienced in the pages of scripture. Now, let me explain this to you, right? How many guys memorize scripture? Show me hands. Okay, good. There's a few of you. That's excellent. When you engulf yourself in the Bible, you know what happens? You don't even have to try to memorize it. It's just there because you just love it. And then through that, the word of God begins to minister to you. And the word of God begins to sustain you and strengthen you and secure you. See, David had such a deep experience with the word of God that it brought him encounter with God. And it transformed the way he lived for God. 
Do you understand that? This is what happened in David's life. He says in Psalm 119, verse 18, he says, Open thou my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. He's like, God, open up my eyes. Show me your glory. Show me your wonders. Show me your majesty. Show me your holiness. Show me your power. God, reveal yourself to me. Show me. Show me. Then in Psalm 119, uh, verse 25, he says, look at he says, my, look at the, my soul cleaveth unto the dust. He says, quicken thou me according to thy word. Lord, quicken me, build me, strengthen me, make me come alive according to your word. In verse 27, he says, make me to understand the, uh, the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. I love that verse. God, make me to understand the way of your precepts. Help me to know your Bible. Help me to know your word. And if I do, I will talk of thy what? I'll, I'll talk about it, God. You want to know why a lot of Christians don't witness and can't witness? Because they have never experienced God. When you experience God, right, witnessing is just as easy as can be. You don't even think about it. It'll just happen. It will literally, God will put people in front of you. It will just happen. And the, and the word of God will just flow out of you. It'll just flow right out. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous work. David knew, God, if I can understand your word, if I can understand you, then I can speak of your majesty. Then I can speak of your glory. Then I can speak of your holiness. But only when you experience it, you can speak it. You can't tell me something that you've never experienced. You can't tell me about Jesus unless you experienced him. You can't tell me about salvation unless you've experienced it. You can't tell me about what God has revealed to you unless God has revealed something to you that you have experienced. This is why so many Christians can't witness. They can't talk about Jesus. They have no power in their lives. Because they've never experienced God himself. Look at 119, verse 28. Notice all the correlations that we could look at in each one of these verses, right? But look at this, Psalm 119, verse 128. My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy what? He says, strengthen me according to your word. You know, guys, David knew where to turn for strength. He, he didn't go to anyone else but God. He didn't, go, he didn't go see, you know, the witch. He didn't go see the doctor. He, you know what he did? He went to the word of God. Guys, anytime you're faced with a problem or a dilemma, you know what we do? We let our emotions get the better of us, first of all. Then we, we all of a sudden, we start to act on emotions. We start to act on impulse. Then we run to this person. We run to this person. No, no, go to the word of God. Go to the word of God. Well, I need strength. Go to the word of God. Amen. I need mental and emotional strength. Go to the word of God. Amen. I need strength how to face the problems that I'm facing on a Monday morning throughout the week. Go to the word of God. Amen. My children are having issues. This person's having difficult. The word of God. Amen. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. You may not realize it, but that book is the only thing that will strengthen you in this world. You need the word of God more than anything else in your life. I could never explain it. I could never express it. It's something that you have to experience in your own heart and in your own life. I can point you in the right direction and tell you. But you have to come and taste and see that the Lord is good. You have to experience this within your own self. And in order for that to happen, you've got to make Jesus Christ the word of God, the most important thing in your life. And until then, you will never experience God. You just won't. There's no such thing as a half-hearted Christian. It just doesn't work that way. 
Jesus said, I would that you were what? Hot or cold? Because you're lukewarm, I'm what? Spew out of my mouth. You've got to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I can point you in the right direction, but only God can reveal these things to you. Only God can show you this. I can't do it. I can't get some of you to understand how important it is for you to be in church. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. That's an act of the Holy Spirit of God that has to touch your heart and your responsibility is to be broken and contrite before God. That's why some of these guys that are broken, Wilkes, Brother George, they experience God on a whole nother level. Maybe God needs to bring some trial like that in our lives. Think about it. Nothing's more important than that book in your life. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for the word of God. Thank you for what you've given to us. And uh, I lift up my brother Wilkes in prayer. George, pray for everyone in this room. Lord, I know people even now are already processing on leaving wherever they have to go. There's nothing more important than what has to be said in the next few moments. I don't care what they think it is, but there's nothing more important than receiving the word of God. I just pray that your people will see this and understand it.